crafting journey here that journey chick on Instagram so make sure you hop on over to Instagram and follow me over there oh how is it going is everybody getting warmer is it getting warmer down there in Texas do you have do you have power yet oh my god those poor people with no power oh, I would have definitely uh, left home so I think some of you know my sister's moving to Texas. <laughs> she, uh, I did finally get a hold of her the other night, the night that she was supposed to leave. I finally got a hold of her, and I realized why I wasn't able to get a hold of her. I forgot that I got a new cell phone number. <laughs> I got a whole new cell phone, new phone number, new company. Um, so, but I, I had left her a message, so. She answers, and I said, it's me, it's me. I got a new phone number. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, and I had called her like, uh, this is like 9 o'clock at night, that night. And I'm like, are you on the road? Where are you? And she's like, no, 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 we're just leaving now. I'm like, uh, well, uh, okay. So their plan was to drive. Now, they're in South Florida. So to get to Central Florida is like three to four hour drive. So their plan was to drive as far as Central Florida, stop for the night, and then get started the next morning yesterday and drive as far as Pensacola, which is at the very top of Florida, which is another several hours, and then stop at a friend's house. So that brings us to today. So I don't know what the weather is like for them today. They would be getting into Alabama. Um, so I don't, you know, for, for, for my peeps down there in Alabama, Nana, how's the weather? Is my sister going to live? <laughs> Are the roads icy? Um, I'm, ho I'm in the hopes that like the main highways that they would travel have been treated and they're safe. We shall see. Um, <laughs> I'll go, I'm going to get her on the phone here soon and uh, check in on her. Um, yeah. The other person I checked in on was my girl, Tia. She took my recommendation, took some Benadryl, and finally got some sleep. Bless her heart. She said she's, she's at least uh, rested now. A little bit more rested, which is, is good. So, you know, thoughts for both of them, you know, Tia has lost three family members in one day last, this past week, and two from COVID, one from a stroke, so, so it's gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, it's just so sad. So, we love you, Tia, we love you, Jean, well wishes. Um... So yesterday, I, you know, I braved the snow. <laughs> I was the slowest person on the road. So I, because um, they haven't cleared the snow from my road yet. So I back out of the driveway and I'm like, uh, what's going to happen? Because I'm driving through like two foot of snow. And I'm thinking, I, was I supposed to shovel the driveway first? I'm like, no, I'm just backing out. <laughs> So I uh, backed out and I got to the main road at a very leisurely pace uh, and then I was fine. But yeah, so I get to the office and get ready for my meeting and there's my coworker. And so after my meeting is over, I'm like, what are you doing here? She's like, oh, I, this is my day to work. I'm like, no, it's my day to work. She's like, no, you're supposed to be here tomorrow. I'm like, no, <laughs> I specifically remember the boss asking me to work 
she her email said can you come in tomorrow so so she gets on the phone with the boss and the boss is like oh dear yes i did tell her she's right i told her she to come in today so so we both sit there you know we're like she's like i just want to get out of the house because she's got two kids and she's like so we sat there and we chit-chatted. I mean, we were working too, but we it was so nice to talk to somebody in person. Now, we've both been vaccinated. Um, she's actually had COVID um, and it, she's recovered from it. And um, I mean, we kept our distance from each other, but it was nice to catch up. Um, then she left around a little bit after lunchtime. I stayed for another hour or so finish up what I was doing and then I headed home and I got home with such a headache I don't know why by the way that meeting went well at one point because <laughs> it was a meeting with the person that I don't like so I took the lead on the meeting like I was supposed to do and and of course he interrupts and tries to take the lead so I at one point interrupted him and took the lead back and you could tell he was kind of miffed about it but so at that point i shut the camera off <laughs> i muted the camera because i didn't want him to see my face because i was like not having her but at the end he saw my point he saw my plan and he asked me to this is gonna happen today well it ain't happening today but it's gonna happen uh <laughs> He's, he's a little man. He's like the Napoleon, you know, Napoleon. Sorry about the tissue, guys. I'm going to have to reorder tissues. This weather is the tissue weather. <laughs> okay. Um, still working on Alice in the bottle. She's in the bottle down here. This is the bottle, top of the bottle. She's down here at the bottom of the bottle. Today is national. Oh my God. I woke up. I went to sleep. At, I fell asleep at 8 o'clock last night. 8 o'clock. I was so tired. Um, but then I got up at 2.30 this morning. I don't know what woke me up. Um, so I was redoing my research at 2.30 in the morning. So I do know what national day it is. Um, it is national long-term caregiver day so this is a um if you know somebody that is getting long-term care whether it's in a nursing home or hospice you know it takes a very very special incredible person to do that kind of work honest to god and do it with any integrity um those people are remarkable. So if you know one, you know, leave them a little note, give them a hug, smile, and, you know, tell them what good work they're doing. They don't hear it enough. Um, I couldn't do it. I'm gonna just gonna say right now, I couldn't do it. Um, so bless them that, that they can do it. Oh, there's an airplane flying over what uh, you know, sometimes a military there's a military base close by what this is why i'm here my son's in the military for like five more minutes uh he's on his like 22nd year now he keeps saying he's gonna retire he hadn't done it yet um but he's only 40 years old can you imagine doing something the same thing for 22 years well he hasn't done the same thing um he's done a lot of different things but he's been in the Air Force for 22 years. Um, wow, just wow. So he could retire now, have a pension, do something totally different. And I think that's what's happening now. He's looking for something different that he can intern at. Um, yeah, so. Okay, it's time for Judge, Jury, and Journey. What do you think of the name? Alec, thank you so much for picking up that name. I told you yesterday I was at work and of course my coworker was there. So I, and I don't have headphones. I didn't bring any headphones. 
so I could listen to the trial while I was working. So, and I didn't want to bother her. So I didn't put it on. And I said, you know, they, whenever they stop for a break, they end a segment and then they'll start a new segment when they come back from the break. So I could, I knew I could go back and watch whatever segments of this trial that I missed. So I could relay the, what happened to you. So, so after she leaves, I'm like, oh, good, I get to watch the trial. And I'm like, you know, turn it on the trial. And I can't find it. I'm like, what? Where's the trial? There's no trial. <laughs> and I'm looking, and I finally go to the actual, um, you know, where I've subscribed, the site that I've subscribed to, Long Crime. And uh, there's the segment from the morning. So I'm like, oh, there's the segment, you know. So I click on it. And now I got to tell you, this has never happened to me in my entire career, what happened in this trial. I was a little stunned when I heard what happened. So everybody's at council tables, but there's a different judge there. I'm like, wait a minute. This judge is a little younger. Yeah, you know, the other judge was very tall and quite old. Quite old. I was a few times. I was looking to see if maybe that wasn't coffee in his cup on the desk. You know, because yeah, he looked like a drinker. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna say that was the impression I got. So anyway, there's the new judge, and he opens the case, and he acknowledges everybody's presence and he proceeds to say judge whoever it was i don't remember his name the old, the other judge the the original judge was walking home from work last night and he tripped and fell and broke his ankle <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> just they're in wisconsin so they got the same weather that we all have I'm like, oh, God, dear, but for the grace of God go I, because that's one thing I was worried about yesterday, slipping and falling. Well, this gentleman slipped and fell, broke his ankle, supposedly having surgery today. So the ju this judge said, uh, I'm going to bring in the jury. We're going to tell them that we are adjourning. We will start the trial again on Monday. Judge is going to have surgery Friday, recover Monday, Sunday, you know, Saturday, Sunday, come in and preside over the trial on, trial on Monday. Uh, God love him. I don't know how without pain medication you're going to do that. But because um, I have broken my ankle before. And uh, yeah, you're going to need the pain medicine. Especially if you're having surgery. I'm just saying. Did I have surgery when I broke my ankle? I don't think I had to have surgery. Now, yeah, no, I didn't have to have surgery. So, and it was still quite painful. Did I? No, no surgery. I just, yeah. It depends on the kind of break, you know, whether or not they have to do surgery. Now, my son broke his ankle of skateboarding many years ago, and, um, They just, they had to put him to sleep. So they took him to surgery, put him to sleep, you know, under general anesthesia because his ankle was like this, you know, so they had to just put it back and set it. So that's called a closed reduction um, under anesthesia. So you could have an open reduction or a closed reduction. Um, so I'm guessing that when I broke my ankle, it, it was not displaced. So they could go ahead and cast it. So I don't know about this judge's ankle, but you know, either way, it's gonna hurt. And um, so anyway, the trial will resume on Monday. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about something I have a touch base on. Now, uh, that is something that, it's something that the jury does consider when they are deliberating, whether they're supposed to consider it or not. It does go, it does get into their mind, and that is the defendant's demeanor. Um, you know, what? what is he acting like during all of this testimony? So we'll talk about testimony day one, two, and three. You know, what was the defendant's 
demeanor. You know, in other words, what was he doing at the table while he was listening to all of this testimony? Because if I'm a juror, that's something I'm going to pay attention to. So, and the camera, the, it's, it's produced very well, whoever's filming this, because every now and then they will show you him. They will, they'll, you know, if something dramatic is being said on the stand, and there hasn't really been a lot of dramatic testimony, but there has been testimony, for example, you know, instead of looking for his wife, he goes to work. Uh, that's one example of dramatic testimony. Um, another example of testimony is, you know, the searchers, you know, I told you that one day three was a parade of people that searched for his wife. They tried to get him involved, or at least to come speak with them. Um, they all they they testified that they like to talk to the person's family to get information. Now they were getting their information from the daughter, who, like I said, didn't have that much to do with her mom. Um, right before this happened because, you know, she had her own family. So, but he refused to participate in searching for his wife. He went to work. He would come home from work. They would go to his house to get him involved. He would be sleeping in his lounge chair or drinking a beer, which is his, was his usual routine. So he was not deviating one iota from his usual routine. Now his wife has vanished into thin air. He's just doing his usual routine. Um, so now what's happening at the council, at his table, the defendant's table, while he's hearing all this? He's got a pen and he's doodling. He's doodling. You can see the circles with the pen. First of all, I'm going to tell you, as an attorney, I would never give my defendant a pen. No. Uh-uh. Um, <laughs> I remember one case, one day, where the, the guy took his pencil and stabbed the lawyer. Like, <laughs> not, it wasn't fatal or anything, but he just, he just took up the pencil and went, I'm like, no, you're not having a pencil or a pen. But anyway, he's got a pen. He's got a pad of paper. Clearly, there's some trust there. That's okay. But uh, he's very expressionless. Now, he's wearing a mask, which does not help. Um, but his eyes are blank, just empty of emotion. You know, uh, not upset about this at all. Now, eight years have passed since she disappeared, but he's not reacting to anything he hears, nothing he hears. Um, it's very strange, very strange demeanor. Now, do I think that makes him guilty? No, I'm not convinced yet. Nothing I've heard has convinced me. Now, I know some stuff that's going, I know like some stuff that's happened since his arrest, but I, I'm not at liberty to say because I'm just going to tell you what's the evidence that's been presented to the jury. So, so that you guys can make up your own mind, but I thought you would like to have that information to help you make up your mind. Did he do it? Did he kill his wife? And get away with it? Well, we don't know if he's going to get away with it, but for the last eight years, he's been out doing his thing. Um, <laughs> he's incredible. Like, his wife just vanished. Like, she, And one thing I didn't tell you is she didn't have a car. She So that has been ruled out. She could not have gotten in her car and driven away. The only vehicle they had was his work truck. Um... And then the son that lived there had a vehicle. She did not have a, she hadn't driven in quite some time, according to all the testimony. So she would have had to walk away 
or some somebody pick her up. Um, now, what I have not heard is any reference to close friends. Like, did she have any close friends that she kept in touch with that might have come gotten her um, at four in the morning? Um, it doesn't seem like there, there there were any because there hasn't been any, any testimony of that at all. And, you know, so it sounds like she, um, you know, with her depression and her colon cancer was very isolated. Um, you know, she knew her kids had their own families and pro probably, I guess, didn't want to bother them. Um, yeah, so that is day four of the Propacovitz trial, Curly's trial. <laughs> is Curly guilty? Okay. Let's move along here. Okay, are we done with this symbol? I think we are. Okay, let's put it away. Um, so today, I do not have to go into work. And it's Friday! Oh my god! Friday dance! Friday! 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 Woohoo! Same as every other day. Right? <laughs> hey, we're in a pandemic. Where am I going? No, girl. Um, okay, I need this next look. This one right here. Yep. This is just all different shades of blue. Do I want the dark blue, the light blue, the middle blue, whatever. So now we've gone from light blue to dark blue. Very interesting. So um, this day in history, doo -doo -doo -doo, the Chicago Seven are sentenced. Now you're like, oh, they got acquitted. Yes, they did. They had more than one charge, though. They were acquitted of, I mean, I'm, I'm going to read it off to you because it's, it's a little complicated. So who were the Chicago Seven? So this was in Chicago, obviously. <laughs> Chicago Seven were in Miami. They were in Chicago. Um, they, this was 19... 70 Democratic National Convention. Uh, ultimately, Nixon goes on to win the election, um, and there there are fifteen thousand anti-war protesters. Now, Mayor Daley did not want them there. He suspended all of the permits for protesting. He did not. He's like, nope. He sent out a whole bunch of police officers, a whole bunch of National Guard, and the <sighs> these officers were anything but kind to the protesters. Now, these it was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration. Now, the Chicago Seven were leaders of several different anti-war movements, including this one gentleman who was um, Bobby Seale, who ended up being tried separately, and, and that's a whole t another story, but he um, he was from the Black Panthers. Some of them were, were from the Students of the Democratic Society, um, National Mobilization Committee, you know, different um, young organizations that were, you know, they're, they were anti-Vietnam War. Um, so their defense was that the police were the people out there inciting these riots, but they were on trial for crossing state lines to incite a riot and for, you know, organizing this riot. So they were charged with conspiracy to cross state lines with intent to incite a riot. Um, By the time the trial ended in February of 1970, this trial went on for five months. Five months. The judge hated these guys. Hated them. Of the, there were really eight. 
um, it, they're called the Chicago Seven because the eighth guy, that Bobby Seale, was tried separately. The reason he was tried separately is because during the trial, he says to the judge, um, and he's the only black member of the of the eight. And he says to the judge, um, my attorney had to have gallbladder, emergency gallbladder surgery. Can we postpone the trial? And the judge says, no. No, we can't. So so this SEAL guy says, okay, I'm going to represent myself. And the judge says, no, you're not. And he says, yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. So at, to the point where the judge eventually has this guy gagged and chained to his chair for three days um, <laughs> during the testimony. Oh, my God. But these guys had all these antics during their trial. Uh, at one time, they were protesting something that happened, and they came, they, uh, they, seven of them come in in judicial robes. And the judge is like, take those off. And they're like, okay, we'll take them off. So they take them off, stomp on them. But what do you think they were wearing underneath the robes? Police uniforms. <laughs> they were wearing police uniforms. So now they're dressed like police, and they're stomping on the judicial robes. So the judge is just infuriated. So by the time this trial ends in February of 1970, these defendants and their attorneys were found guilty of 175 counts of contempt of court and sentenced them uh, to between two and four years in jail for all these contempt charges. Um, the some of them were charged to five years and fined five thousand dollars. So um, the, they were found not guilty of conspiracy, but they were found guilty of intent to riot. They never served. None of them, including the lawyers, ever served a day in jail. None. Uh, they appealed. The appeal was overturned. The appellate court said this judge was wrong, clearly biased against all these guys, and, you know, that they all went free. And the guy that was being tried separately never got tried because they had been acquitted of the main charge, and the, the prosecutor said, no, we're not going through this again. So he just dropped the charges <laughs> for the eighth guy. What a debacle. Oh, my gosh. I was only 10 years old, oblivious to all of that. <laughs> so that is this day in history. This, uh, yeah, this particular day in history would have been the day that they were sentenced um, by that ridiculous judge. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think the ridiculous went both ways. The ridiculousness went both ways. So today, my plan is to work, obviously. I've got to do some work. And, um, you know, I want to finish a couple crochet projects so I can show them to you tomorrow in the morning show. Saturday. Sunday, we're having um, one buoy made it on the Sunday morning show. She will not be here for the entire show Sunday. Um, she's going to give us like 20 minutes. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, yeah. I don't think she diamond paints. We're going to have to ask her. But she's going to be here to talk about loom knitting. Any questions you have about loom knitting, bring them Sunday and let's find out. Um, and she's really a very sweet, remarkable person. Really, really sweet very put together like makeup jewelry I don't I don't do that stuff <laughs> you don't see a lot of makeup on me or jewelry or um, I guess I'm not well put together I'm put together I'm here <laughs> but um, yeah anyway is my heater on it is on oh look yeah I don't think I don't have the heat on just the, the fireplace part of it. Um, so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Tonight 
at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, is Mickey Sunshine Creates. I will be there, of course, because the, the woman is my bestie, and I have to support her. Don't know what we're going to talk about. We never do. But she gets through her hour. She's so funny. Oh, my God. She's just, because she laughs. <laughs> She's got this funny laugh. Anyway, and uh, right after her is... DP Addiction Adventures, don't know what she's got up her sleeve, always has something up her sleeve, but she'll be up at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. So, have a great evening. I will uh, see you in one of the lives or see you tomorrow in the morning show. Bye. everybody. Stay safe. Stay warm. And crap dog.